Are you interested in publishing activity books on Amazon? Have you ever considered adding interactive puzzles and games to your cartoons and comics? Well, if so, stay tuned because I got something awesome to share with you guys. <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground lair where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because you know what? You have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. Now, I'm into a lot of different kinds of art. You've probably heard me talk quite a bit about comics and cartoons and things like that, but one thing you may not know is I'm really big into puzzles too. I've created a lot of puzzles and activities and things like that. In fact, I used to collect these uh, just Anytime I went to a restaurant, I would get like a children's book because they're just packed with puzzles and tons of ideas. I mean, this is just a small sample of some of the, the books, the, the different puzzles and things I have in my collection because like I said, I love to create puzzles and there's so many different applications for doing those. Now, I'm a pretty decent artist, but the puzzle making part of this whole thing, uh, it's a little difficult. There's a lot of math involved, uh, formatting, and just coming up with the ideas or the concepts and creating these puzzles can be difficult. Fortunately, I have a secret weapon, and that is BookBolt. Now, I've talked about BookBolt before, and I've done a video using their book designer and showing how I make my workbooks uh, that I publish on Amazon. So I'll leave a link to that video so you can check that out as well. But they've got another feature called PuzzleWiz that's pretty awesome, and that's kind of what I want to show you today. But before I get to that, I want you to know about a special offer that's going on right now. It's time sensitive. Black Friday is right around the corner as I'm putting this video video out and BookBolt is running a special. It's $49.99 for a six month subscription to BookBolt. And this, this, I mean, I've never seen them run a special like this before. And the really cool thing is this also includes their Puzzle Whiz feature. And that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today. And this is usually an extra feature that's only available with their like premium subscription. So all of that for six months for $49.95 but I know this sounds really super salesy, but here, that's not all, okay? Right now, also, I have a 20% off coupon in the link of the description, so that's gonna bring it down to $39.99 for six months of Book Bolt. That comes out to just $6.66 a month, and at the end of that six months, if you wanna continue subscription with Book Bolt, and I think you will, you'll be locked into that ridiculously low rate for life. So, you know, act now. This is only good from now until November 30th. Try it out, try out the Puzzle Whiz. Once you see the kind of stuff that you can create, I think uh, you might wanna jump on this. So just wanted to put that out there before I get into making some really cool puzzles. Like I said, I use Book Bolt myself. It has tons of features, not even counting the Puzzle Whiz. It's got features, like I said, to design books. I've used it to design workbooks that I upload to Amazon through their KDP platform. And also, they have tons of tools that will help you market your books, like keyword search tools, all that kind of stuff. So definitely check that out. I'm not gonna rehash that because I did another video. Like I said, I'll leave a link to that if you wanna check out that. We're gonna talk about puzzles today and their Puzzle Whiz feature. Now, a lot of you folks that follow me on this channel are cartoon or comic book creators, but activity books, puzzles, and games, they work really well with comics. I want to show you this comic. It's called Psycho KO. So this is an Alterna published comic. Now, as you can see, the back portion is all your typical color comic, but then the artist went in and did black and white line art, so you can color it in, and also activity pages like this. And it's just chock full of these. So, I mean, you could do all kinds of puzzles within your comics, and I just think that's that's pretty cool, and that's something that I would like to do with my own books, or, you know, like I said, do activity books that I can publish on Amazon through KDP. I mean, the sky is really the limit, but the problem is, and I've done books before. This is, this is uh, I did this for AAA, and these are coloring books, coloring activity books. I did these. I did tons of puzzles of these, and I did this a while back, but, you know, connect the dots, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was fun to do, but it, it is a lot of work. And BookBolt's Puzzle Whiz feature takes a lot of that guesswork out of there. The calculating and coming up with, you know, when you do a word search, okay, maybe you can put your words in, but then all that formatting and the extra, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. And, you know, Puzzle Whiz does all that stuff for you. So I want to give you a really quick demo on how you can use this feature. Not only how you can use it, but how you can add to it, spice it up, and make 
you know, puzzles that are going to stand out from anyone else who's creating puzzles, whether it's KDP or in your comics or whatever, and just create something original, create something new. And so I'm going to give you a few tips uh, just on top of what you can do with Puzzle Whiz uh, so you can have sort of the best of both worlds. So without any further delay, let's get into it. All right, so here I am at the BookBolt homepage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I, I guess I'm already logged in. And I just wanted to show you, this is the, this is the BookBolt interface. Uh, I have done a video talking about some of these features, but you know, there's a lot of different features here. Product search, seller search, cloud, book scout, favorites, keywords. I mean, the list goes on. Lots of different features. If you're creating KDP books that are gonna help you market them, create them, all of that. But like I said, I did do a video on that, which I will link to if that's the part you're interested in. But right now, what I'm interested in is showing off some of the features of Book Bolt's Puzzle Wiz. So you're gonna find that once you go, here's my, just under your name, I'm gonna click that. And you're gonna just go right down to Puzzle Wiz. And here we are at Puzzle Whiz, and I want to show you, just like with the features in the, the regular book boat, Puzzle Whiz has all of these tutorials, and they're really good. They're, they're, they're pretty simple to learn how to do. They're not very long tutorials. It's not very complicated. I'm not going to show you all of those, but these, I mean, these different puzzles, they're Sudoku, Nirokabe, uh, Crosswords, Word Search, Hangman, Cryptogram, Word scamp, Scramble, Missing Vowels, Mind Finder, Mazes, Kakaro, and then there are extra features like uh, that will convert your color artwork to grayscale. A lot of people publish gray uh, scale books in KDP because it's a lot less expensive. And also, uh, they will allow you to take uh, artwork and just make line art out of it. And uh, in addition, you can create connect the dot books. So lots of cool features. I'm not going to go super in depth in, in any of these because there are great tutorials on here. Once you sign up, you'll be able to have access to those. Um, but I want to start off with a maze and I want to show you how you can take what BookBolt is offering here and and kind of add your own flair to it because when you're creating books you want them to stand out you don't want to just publish books as is at least I don't so I'm going to show you how I use BookBolt and Puzzle Whiz to create some really cool books that I can publish either on KDP or however you want to create a maze, we are going to go down here to the maze link. We're going to click on that. We're going to have a few different options. The first is bleed. If you're not familiar, bleed means the artwork is going to go to the edge of the page. Even though what I'm going to be designing will not bleed off the page, I just always use bleed. That way, if it bleeds, it bleeds. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it doesn't, I just, it's all the same format either way. That's just the way I tend to do things. The next is your page size. So you can choose between 5x8, 6x9, and eight and a half by 11. Those are common sizes for publishing on Amazon with their KDP platform. Um, I'm actually going to be publishing at eight and a half by 11, but I'm not going to choose eight and a half by 11 because I want my puzzles to be a little smaller. This will generate smaller pages because I'm going to take those puzzles and I'm going to drop them into Photoshop and I'm going to add some other elements so it's just not the straight puzzles. I'm going to add some illustrations and things. So I'm going to go with the smaller size. Um, and then you have to, you can choose double sided, uh, single sided. A lot of times for coloring books, if you're going to color stuff, um, and mine will have coloring elements in them. You want to do single sided so that color doesn't bleed through if people do color them. Um, so I'm going to choose single sided. Uh, and also, I'm going to be doing just one-off pages, and then I'm going to collect them all, and then I'm going to use Adobe InDesign to format everything. There are PDF program, PDF combiners, so you can create everything that you upload to Amazon KDP has to be in PDF format, which you can export that from Photoshop or many other programs, whatever program you're using. Um, and then you can also combine those. There are PDF combiners where you can take all your different pages and make put them into one. I showed that in the last video, so you can check that out, and you can, or you can just Google PDF combiner. I'm gonna choose one page. If you're doing a, a, a bulk, like if you're gonna do like a whole book of 25 different puzzles or whatever, then you can select the number of pages and everything. Um, but I'm just gonna do one page at a time. Then you can choose your fonts, and there are tons of fonts here. Uh, 
don't concern yourself with that. That would be my advice. You want something simple. I wouldn't even choose this font here. Uh, if you start, for instance, uh, let's say lobster. Lobster is a very decorative font. Here you can see it show up here. I would not use that for a number of different things, especially once we get into crossword puzzles and word searches. I want something very basic, so a nice sans serif font. So, I, what is it, average sans, there we go. That's, a, that's pretty basic, so I would stick to simple fonts. When you're dealing with puzzles, you don't want anything too fancy or anything like that. So I'm gonna go with this average sans. Um, I definitely want to include the solutions. If you're publishing a book of puzzles, you want to show people the answers to those puzzles. So I'm including the solutions. Um, like I said, I'm going to do these one at a time. Uh, so I'm not going to really, with what I'm doing, I'm not going to worry about matching the pages and the numbers and all that stuff. So I'm not going to click on that. Uh, so that's all the information that I need. I'm going to submit that and then it is going to generate a puzzle for me. It can sometimes take a little while for the puzzles to generate, especially if you're doing a lot of them. But now my puzzle's ready, so I'm just going to download that. And what that's going to do is that's going to download a PDF format uh, that I can use. I can either publish that directly to Amazon with their KDP platform, or in my case, I'm going to open that PDF format into Photoshop and I'm going to add some extra stuff to it and really make a really nice page. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move on to Photoshop. Okay, so now I am in Photoshop, and if you don't have Photoshop, you can use GIMP or what you know, Affinity, whatever you're using uh, for this type of thing to do your layouts or whatever. You may be able to use Canva, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't used Canva, I, I pretty much stick to Adobe, uh, but you can use whatever program you want. But this is a coloring book page that I created for uh, another book that I uploaded. I'm gonna be repurposing some of the artwork from this. So what I'm gonna do, uh, oh first let's 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 get our puzzle. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open, let me find, so here's my maze PDF that I created using PuzzleWiz. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna open this. Now these, this is the maze uh, and this is the solution here. Uh, right now I'm just gonna concentrate on the maze right here without, the, without it being solved. Uh, so I'm gonna, it's already selected. You can see this, uh, I can select either one of these, whichever one I wanna open. So I'm gonna open this, and there is my puzzle. Now, this may be fine if you wanna use it like that, that's fine. I'm, I, um, I'm a, a little concerned, I don't really, I don't really like these little white lines in between here. I want it to be one solid maze. I think it's just gonna look better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, you know, uh, magic wand tool. I'm gonna select here. So everything that's white is selected. And just to make sure that that's the case, I'm gonna go up to select, and then I am going to find similar and click on that, and that will make sure that anything that's white will be selected. Uh, now, what I want to do is I wanna fill in all these blacks, uh, black, just where the li these white lines are to make it solid black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to select, and then I'm going to go to inverse, and basically now everything the opposite of white, which is black, is going to be selected. And then I've already got black selected as my color. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and fill those in. So now you can see I've got a nice solid maze. So what I'm going to do is I want to select the whole thing, select all, and I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another file. Okay, there we go. So I created this little border and I'm gonna place my maze into here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste that in right there. Oh, it fits pretty perfectly. You might have to resize it or whatever. So I've got my maze in there. And then what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna go back to my other file because I'm gonna be using some of the artwork in here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select this little guy right here. Select him, then I'm gonna copy him onto my clipboard, and then I'm gonna go back up here, and I'm just gonna paste him in here. He's right here, he's kinda of hidden. And then I'm gonna kinda of move him over, and kinda of position him in here, right where the maze is gonna start. So he's, this gives it, 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 I mean, rather than just, oh, here's a maze that you do something, we're gonna, we wanna add a narrative to this, you know? So the, this little boy, he's gonna be, he's a paleontologist and he's gonna be looking for some dinosaur bones. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my border and click on that, and because since it's overlapping here, just wanna create that, you know, take kind of 
delete some of that stuff so it looks nice and everything. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to do this quickly. I've already have some of this pre-done, but I just want to show you. So I can go here and I can select this dinosaur and all these different elements. And we'll go back up here and then so the, pop the dinosaur in there. And then one by one, I'm just going to drop these in here. Like I said, I've already positioned them, but uh, just to make this quicker. But I'm just going to take a lot of those elements, cut and paste them in here. And then we've got our puzzle. And of course, we need to give a little direction. So, you know, we'll get our type tool. Uh, where is it? Right here. This is our type tool in Photoshop. And we're just going to add whatever text we want. So right here, help the paleontologists discover the dinosaur bones. Uh, and there we have a nice, attractive page. And this is, you know, 8.5 by 11 with a bleed. So it's the format that I want. Like I said, I created the puzzle a little smaller. That way it gives me room to do all this stuff. Because you don't need a giant puzzle. I mean, this is big enough for somebody to solve. So there we go. We've got a nice, attractive, illustrated, you know, puzzle page that we can you know create a puzzle book with now if you're not the best artist or you're not an artist at all that's or if you're just publishing on KDP that's fine you can also use clip art and everything like that to create you know whatever whatever you want but it's just a little better than just having those standard mazes or other puzzles uh, now that that's done what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and save as and we are going to choose PDF, Photoshop PDF, or whatever program you're using, just make sure you can export to PDF, because like I said, KDP files need to be in PDF format, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna save that. Let's create another puzzle. This time we're gonna create a crossword puzzle, so I'm gonna click, click the crossword puzzle link. Uh, this one's a little more complicated, but it's really still not that difficult. There's just a few extra steps. So like we did before, uh, I'm gonna change this. I'm just gonna do single-sided. I'm gonna do one page. I'm going to choose a basic font. I'm gonna do the average sans font, especially like I said with these crosswords, you know, one fancy, um, <laughs> fancy fonts. Uh, so anyway, uh, now what it's asking is it, it wants you to create a lot of different questions for your crosswords, questions and answers and everything, because it it may not pick all of them, so it wants to wants you to give a lot for them to choose from. It's like seventy to a hundred different word descriptions. Uh, now under here. Here's some other things we can click on here. So use random words and sentences if your file is not meeting the requirements. So in this case, it will add other you know, questions and answers to search for. I, I'm not gonna use that because I want a theme to my crosswords. So I'm gonna do like a cooking theme and I don't want just random questions that have nothing to do with cooking. So I'm not gonna click on that. But if you're just doing standard crosswords that really don't have a theme, then you can click on that and it will help you know, help create those. Uh, anyway, uh, again, I'm gonna include the solutions. Um, I'm not gonna concern myself with this, but if you are creating a, a, you know, a, a entire book of crossword puzzles and you, you want them to match the page numbers and everything, you can definitely do that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we have to get our questions. There's a place here for us to upload our file. Now, it, up, what you have to do is you have to create a CVS file, which is like Excel, or in my case, what I'm gonna be using is Google Sheets. So what you can see here is I, I've opened Google Sheets and there, in these two columns, the first columns, I have all my answers to my questions, and again, they're all food related, and then all the questions in line B. Now, if you're, if you're going to be uploading multiple puzzles in one, all you have to do is say, if this is my first puzzle, just leave a space and then add all the questions and answers to your next puzzle and then leave another space and then it will, if you, if you do that, uh, then it will generate a number of different puzzles. So what I'm gonna do in uh, Google Sheets is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to download and I'm gonna make sure it's a CVS file. I'm gonna click on that and that's gonna download my CVS file. Then I'm just going to go back over to Puzzle Wiz. I'm gonna select my file. Uh, here is my spreadsheet. I'm going to upload that. And it could take a little bit for it to upload. No, I guess it's right here. And then I'm just going to submit it and it's going to create a puzzle for me. Okay, we're back in Photoshop. This is another coloring book page I did for my inspirational kids coloring book. Uh, again, I'm going to take some of these. Uh, I'll take this, can take this little guy right here and just kind of cut him out. Just select him copy him, 
Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I have another page that I've created and I'm going to drop my crossword into that. So let me find the, this is the crossword page. I've already, you know, this is the, the PDF file or it was, I've opened it as, as now a Photoshop file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this just like we did before with the maze. And now I'm going to paste that in here. Now this time it's not lining up perfect, but that's fine. I'm just going to select this little platter that I did. I'm just going to, let's see, oops, so let's see, let's undo that. I'm going to take that off there for a minute. Sometimes you select the background accidentally. And then I'm just going to move that into place. Perfect. So now I've got the crossword puzzle in there. Here, I'll turn that back on so you can see it. And now, just like before, oh, here we got our boy. I just want to select the kid. All right, there we go. So, and I'm just going to paste him right in there. And then from there, we can just start adding other characters and other elements. Just, again, I'm just going back to this file. I'm copying this stuff and I'm pasting it in. So you can see how we've created a really nice, um, let me move this background back there so you can see it there. So we created, once again, a really nice page. Okay, we're gonna create one more puzzle. This time we're gonna do a word search. This is very similar to the crossword. Again, bleed, I'm gonna do smaller puzzles even though I am making a larger eight and a half by 11 size page. Uh, for me, I'm gonna just do single sided, one page. Uh, I don't, same thing with the other one. I don't wanna use random words and sentences. So I'm gonna click that off. I wanna include solutions. And, uh, and then it's similar, we need to create a, a CSV file. So we're gonna go here. This time it's even simpler. We only have one, uh, you know, one column here and I've got all the words and this one is gonna be a space themed one. So all words that have to do with space uh, in one column and to do the same thing, I'm gonna go file and then I am going to download that. Make sure it's a CSV file, download that go back into Puzzle Wiz and then select my file, just like I did before. Very, you know, it's pretty much the same process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my word search. This is the PDF. It's gonna ask me to choose uh, this file right here. I'm gonna open that up. I've got that. I'm gonna select all. I'm gonna copy that. I'm just gonna drop the word search in there. And just like before, I'm going to start Going over to my page, I'm gonna select, you know, select the astronaut, <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna add the astronaut. I'm gonna add, I'll do a little capsule here, add another astronaut, just add all these elements. That's pretty much the process. That's how I create these nice pages using Puzzle Wiz and my own artwork. And just so it's just not a standard puzzle. You know, I just wanna add something and make it make it look a lot nicer, especially if we're using these for our comic books or whatever. Um, we want that ability to do that. So that's how you would do that. And like I said, look at, if you definitely wanna sign up for, for Book Bolt and Puzzle Wiz, if you wanna do this kind of work, uh, it just makes it so much easier. And there's other things you can do too. Like I didn't even touch on like the connect the dots and all those different, you know, Sudoku and all these different puzzles that you can do. And there's, like I said, there's great videos on Puzzle Wiz that show you how to do each one of these and even more, kind of more depth than I'm showing. So, but I just wanted to show you how I use this plus my own art skills. And you can use whatever programs, whatever you're more comfortable with, but yeah, Puzzle Wiz makes it so much easier to do that. All right, so there you have it. Those are just some of the uses that you can use the Book Bolt Puzzle Wiz feature. I mean, I didn't even go into Sudoku and you know Hangman. All there's there's tons of different ways that you can create puzzles. I just showed you a few of them. You know, connect the dots. Uh, there's so much you can do. But uh, like I said, you can add them to your comics. You can create your own activity books that you can publish. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, the sky is the limit. So, but it makes it so much easier to have those puzzles generated automatically rather than to having do all that stuff yourself because for me I know I just want to concentrate on the artwork but I do want to create cool puzzles and this is going to help me out a lot so don't forget uh, the special going on right now it's $49.99 Black Friday special but with that with that 20% off coupon uh, code that is in the description of this video uh, take that 20% off that's $39.95 for six months of book bolt plus the puzzle whiz that's $6.66 a 
month. You can lock in that rate for life and it's good from now until November 30th. I've never seen a run a special like this before, so definitely jump in on that. And if you're coming to this video late, uh, I imagine that 20% off will still work, uh, probably not for the Black Friday special, but definitely check it out. Check out Book Bolt, check out Puzzle Whiz, and uh, that's all I got to say today. I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Cirkworks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to Cirkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.